Thank you, Derek. I'm not sure I fall in the entertaining category. Um, I do know it's going to be a good and lucky day. They say if a bird craps on you, it's, uh, it's good luck. Um, I came to my car this morning and it must have sat under a tree with a thousand birds on it because it looked like a wicked camper by the time I got to it. It was unbelievable. So it's going to be a good day, I can see that. I have moved to the, uh, London about five or six months ago. Sydney has been home for me. It's not good when I see weather like this when you come back here visiting, I can tell you. Not good at all. Um, but I guess when I got back here, um, which was just last week, some consistency. Um, I know we're, we're in a place of change, but there's some consistency. The uh, New South Wales government is still well and truly on the nose. Um, the federal government is on the nose. Uh, the NRL league players, they're, they're, they're behaving themselves well. And, and the banks have just come out of their Royal Commission and have some brand challenges, I think, for the future. So for the CMOs or ad agencies in the room who work around those four organisations, I, I wish you well over the coming period. That could be some challenging times for those brands. So here we go. Let's start with just a, a sort of a sideline. And, and this is the question I get from a lot of Australians is Brexit. What's happening with Brexit? Um, I can tell you on behalf of London, not so much England, but London, they have no idea. Um, it's a subject that the Londoners don't want to speak about. Um, it's, it's a decision that just went one way that they didn't see coming. I think if you ask people outside of London, you get a different story. But it's a real unknown there. And uh, how it's going to impact the media and marketing scene, no one really knows. I did have a chat to uh, a colleague from JLR, Jaguar Land Rover, who has been working in England for a long time. He has a very clear perspective on what the impact of Brexit will be, and that may come up in a panel session. But I can tell you how that's going to impact media and marketing um, will be an interesting play. I did attend the um, MediaTel session, uh, The Future of Brands in London, a few weeks ago. Terrific day. And I may as well have been sitting in Sydney, to be honest with you. Um, the opportunities, the challenges, the issues, um, absolutely consistent with this country. And I'm sure we're in for a cracking day. So the other part that I probably want to just encourage everyone, pulling yourself out of the office, uh, it's probably like me, it's not easy. It's, it's a, a struggle to get away and extract yourself out of the office, get away from the emails, phone calls, meetings, etc. But these days are important. Um, there's always some highs, there's always some midpoints, and there's a couple of lows occasionally. But it does get you thinking, and I guess that's what we've got to try and encourage everyone to do, to just start thinking of the big picture and the strategic issues. And what I find myself doing, and I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm sure you do as well, you start thinking about the things you should be doing, the things you shouldn't be doing, uh, and maybe some of the things um, that you would change. And for that reason alone, these sessions are always really positive. Um, I think the other part of it is this room are the custodians of brands for the future and I dare say our employment has something to do with that so stay at it and, and keep doing a good job. Um, let me set up the framework uh, for some of my comments by just running a short ad reel just to start with from, from, years, from years gone by. So Aaron if you can just kick off the first ad reel. a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic. No battery lasts longer than Energizer. Oi! The correct, the, the, the correct, the, the. I just mix the fruit, the ghost in the corners, to make it for you. <laughs> Is it all like this? Well, if we're going to make a party of it, let's nibble Lobby's nuts. That's no how you make porridge. Mum's doing a lamb roast. Oh, great, yeah. I want a packet of Tim Tams that never runs out. One day you're gonna get caught. G-O-G-G-O. Bugger. Bugger. Why did 
think they built the Great Wall of China. I think uh, for any of those that grew up in the 70s and 80s, and there's not enough senior citizens in this room, I'm sorry to say, um, a lot of those ads were absolutely iconic ads. They do fall in the category of, of classic. Um, just sensational, those brands, VB, Vegemite, um, Energizer, Tim Tam, Toyota, all those sorts of brands have absolutely stood the test of time and will continue to. Um, and the survival uh, of those brands, um, it, it's, it's no easy feat. Um, and certainly, particularly from the consumer packaged goods industry, um, it is a tough, tough, you know, thousands of products, thousands of different brands. Um, surviving for 10, 20, 30 plus years is a feat in itself. And clearly, survival of brands um, does relate to the industry sector you play in. Um, it was interesting that the decor I had, um, I was trying to work out whether or not that product is actually still sold. I remember buying it when the ads came out. Uh, a guy called John Nan Curvis was the creative director behind that one. So I played some golf with him and he told me about it. Um, but I was trying to work out whether or not that product was still um, available. And, and I did three minutes of some serious desk research, as we do. And I sort of one of the links was to a Vogue blog. Um, so I went to the blog. And in July 2007, someone had the same question. Um, and the lady asked, does anyone know if the Decore range of shampoo and conditioners have been discontinued. My mum makes, oh, sorry, my mum uses it and it's the only thing that doesn't cause allergies and other problems with her hair. Is it, is it available anywhere? I need to tell you there was no response and so I don't know whether Decore is still available. Um, it did go to number one shampoo within months of that campaign and like a lot of FMCG products though, it's a tough game to stay relevant and stay unique in its positioning. I don't think it's around. If someone has an answer for that, yell it out. Um, but to still see these brands, um, as I said, is, is really quite remarkable. It's tough to keep them front and centre, but the ability to ruin a brand is pretty easy. Um, it's, there is a lot of marketing and media levers you can use to actually really disturb a brand's health. Um, I've actually played with those levers before and it's a very uncomfortable sort of process. The only thing you keep telling yourself was that was a good experience and I'm going to learn from that process. And, and I hope that's the case with a lot of you here. And it was interesting at the uh, Future of Brands event in London a few weeks ago, there was a panel session. And what I really liked it is the person who was facilitating the panel actually asked the panellists not what was one of your great success stories, they actually said, what did you screw up? And I thought it was a really good question, and of course it was really enlightening uh, to hear where those individuals made errors, because that's probably where the greatest learnings are from. And so most of them bared their soul and talked about the stuff ups they'd made. And I actually thought it was really encouraging, I think, for all of us, when we saw a big powerhouse marketing brand like P&G come out last year and declare that they got it wrong with their media allocation. They actually shifted too much money into certain channels in the digital area. Um, that's a sort of a very healthy approach to marketing and activity. And we want to see more brands like that come out and talk about learnings um, so everyone can benefit from the whole process. So to the topic on the future of brands, I'm going to raise just a few more thoughts on the way through here just to get kickstart the thinking. Um, none of them are re revolutionary, I think that's fair to say, but just reinforcement of some principles. I think for me, the critical elements of marketing um, are the same today as they were when I started as a young boy in shorts and long socks. A product or a service that delivers on its promise to the consumer or customer. A product or a service that is, has a unique service proposition. It's differenti differentiated in some capacity. It represents value. It's not necessarily cheap or low cost, but it represents value to the consumer. And last but not least, it actually connects with the consumer in some way. Now, we're going to talk about that in a little bit further, but 
it's a big room here, people have pads and everything else, so I, I, I dare say a number of you are playing marketing media bullshit bingo. So I want to get you started quickly on that process, so here we go. Complexity, change management, accountability, ROI, transparency, in-housing, outsourcing, full service, effectiveness, efficiency, programmatic, big data, trust, AI, top of the funnel. How do we go? We've got those ticked off. You'll hear all those words throughout the day. I'm absolutely certain of it. They're common themes, common themes, whichever market you go to around the world, I can tell you. So when I started the product marketing game, um, it was known as the four Ps of marketing, product, place, price and promotion. Um, I was informed a few years ago my, by my very wise son who had just graduated from marketing that I was old school and it was now six Ps. The world had moved on and there was now something called performance which related to business objectives and something called people which related to future and current customers attaining, attaining and acquiring them. Um, I've now had the pleasure of going back to him during my three minutes of desk research telling him that there's now seven, eight, nine and now 11 Ps of marketing. Um, so the world is moving on. I think the basics are still there. I did ask some of the smarter minds at Ubiquity um, back in London some thoughts around marketing and branding. And I just wanted to give you their perspectives, and there was four of them, uh, on, on the issues around brands and marketing. The first person made this comment. Provide a product and or service which will make them like you, make them trust you, make them choose you, make them recommend you. Don't expect them to love you. The second comment, many CMOs don't stay long in their jobs and that often it is their agency partners, both creative and media, that actually have the real depth of understanding of the brands. Building great brands is therefore often a partnership between the client and their agencies. I think that's a really interesting perspective. Third one, focus ruthlessly on driving business outcomes. Aligning your partners around business outcomes and measuring those in a way that reflects the real value of your marketing activities and investments that balance both short term and long term. And lastly, last comment by someone, it's never been more important to measure the effects of investments. Brands need empirical evidence of what works and why in order to grow investment and to deliver growth. I want to pick up on those last couple of comments. The importance of measuring business outcomes and marketing effectiveness over the short and long term. I mean, it goes without saying, we have an incredibly challenging marketing and media environment. Um, far more challenging, far more complex than in my day when I was a product manager. But we have more access to data and sources of information than we've ever had. Is just, in actual fact, there's probably too much information. The critical piece is making sure you get the right information. But I think the key is here, we do have the information at our fingertips to get hold of to find out what's working and what's not. And let me just quote someone, Keith Weed, the CMO for Unilever, who was Global Market of the Year in 2017, he summed it up well. He said, measure what you treasure. Um, and I grew up with a mantra which was, you know, you can't manage what you don't measure. And that is a really, really important message. I do applaud the advertisers and marketers that are pushing this area and constantly looking at what's driving effectiveness and business outcomes. But my comment would be, there's not enough of them. Um, insert brand name here, Ubiquity happens to play in this space, in the marketing analytics and effectiveness area. Some selfless self-promotion there. Um, but we do have to measure the outcomes. We've got to be more focused on business outcomes and measuring those outcomes. Um, I was involved in Think TV's um, research study. Uh, it was a major piece of work. It was across 21 major brands in this country, looking at over three years of data across four industry sectors and looking at the return on investment of the media channels. And it's those types of research studies and work that really help brands make informed decisions. And again, I sort of encourage industry bodies and I encourage their marketers as well to continue investing in this area. So before I finish, um, let me play another ad reel um, from it's the drinks industry as, as they're known. When I was a little kid, it was called the alcohol industry. It's known as the drinks industry now. 
um, that also reinforce a couple of really important messages. The first one, and I think a lot of us work in data a, a lot, but the first one is the importance of the creative. Um, I can tell you in our analytics group, we have about 65, 70 rocket scientists in London that do a lot of um, analytics and econometrics work. They will tell you that the creative messaging and seeing where it changes and what creative is being used in what channel is a critical piece of the marketing and media lever. So that will come through. Um, and the second one is look for the Reshers ad in here. Um, it's a really interesting comment it's making. Um, it's talking about don't get fooled by great colourful advertising and fancy jingles. And this is from a beer ad. Um, but it talks to a critical point and it says it is about the product quality at the end of the day. It's about the taste. It's about that's what the thing that will keep the product coming back. And if you look at the, even the ad, I don't know whether they've changed their label too much over the years. It still looks like the same Resch's Pilsner I occasionally buy. So let's play the last reel. Firstly, the big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic. A long cold Vic. It can come at any time. You mend the plough all over the bow. Matter of fact, I've got it now. When you're ready to share no more than a sunny day, UDL is ready for you. When you're ready to share more than pop concerts, UDL is ready for you. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel like a twist. I feel like... Belch a beer down, y'all, with your mates. Knock it back some, appreciate. It isn't the advertising that makes you drink it. It's the taste. Clean and crisp, with a hint of hops. It's called Rish's Pilsner. There's no better place to be exactly who you are. Drop by sometime. Jack lives here. The head. But oh, the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic. You know my picking ability is independent of my height. Of course it is. You're a good picker. Just happened to be a giraffe. Well, maybe you should try picking potatoes. Stronger. Hand picked by hand. I still think the, uh, the drinks industry still do some of the best advertising. Um, a lot of what we don't see on mainstream TV or radio, print, um, but some of their online digital work is, is fantastic. So let me wrap up. The future of brands will continue to rely on the critical skills and execution of the four Ps, six Ps, seven Ps, whatever it is. Um, basically, the, the, the main building blocks of marketing. I don't think we're going to forget those. And today's seminar will look at the various challenges of our marketing and media world, as always. And the success is balancing the art and the science. Now, from someone who has spent 30 years working with marketing and media information, I again encourage everyone to be more rigorous with measuring business outcomes, the science. But please, don't forget the wonderful art of judgment based on your own experiences of success and failures. Um, enjoy the day. Thank you.